Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night, and when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. Sun Tzu No one can predict when or exactly where a thunderbolt is going to hit. It just appears and then disappears with no real rhyme or reason. This is how we are going to have to operate in the future. It seems somewhat counterintuitive because these days people want to plan everything, and planning is good. Make no mistake, but sometimes it leads you into a trap. Some have said, Florida Maquis, haven't you seen recently the Department of Homeland Security has said that domestic terrorism and uh, lockdown protesters are the number one threat? They're really focusing on this and they're going to come after us? Well, good, number one, in the sense that they see it as something to be concerned about. But number two, don't fall for every little announcement like this. Because there's another piece of wisdom that comes out of Sun Tzu. If your opponent is of a choleric temper, seek to irritate him, pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. See, it's my personal belief that they put out statements like that to get people to use social media to announce themselves, to perhaps react in a way that they wouldn't normally react, and give themselves up don't fall for it. If you have maintained good operational security up until this point, continue to do so. Continue to keep a low profile. Kind of irony that military intelligence has the slogan, always out front, when 99% of the time we are hidden and watching and learning about our enemy. I've used this series from USA Before Colony, and there are a great many parallels in it to what's going on today, but there's another level within the series that I haven't spoken about, and I'd like to speak about it today, because I think it's very important for people to understand this strategy. In the very first season, there was a character, the actor Paul Guilfoyle, named Alexander Quayle, and he is the leader of the resistance block in Los Angeles. Now, he's just kind of a quiet, older, somewhat balding character, nondescript. You know, he doesn't look like he's a door kicker. He doesn't look like he's some super soldier. Just kind of a quiet old man. But maintains excellent operational security in what he does, because they were living in a moment where they do what they had to do for the people that they love. The old rules just didn't apply. They would meet in secret, and they would make their plans, and they wouldn't make a big deal out of it. However, a problem arose with the Katie Bowman character, Sarah Wayne Caius. See, her goal was the protection of her family. Yes, she wanted to see the aliens defeated, but he didn't have a family. So he had a whole different set of parameters and lengths to which he was willing to go to affect the mission that she couldn't go along with. And eventually it uh, came to a head and they had to make a decision to part ways and go about the same mission in different ways. And that may be the case with what we have to do. Don't always judge a book by its cover. Because for her, the right decision, this character, the right decision was the one that allowed her to wake up in her bed and be a part of her kid's life the next morning. Any decision that didn't allow her to do that was the wrong one. This is what it was all about. And right now, in this country, this is what it's really about. Our families and our kids and our loved ones and staying together. No matter what. See, this is the easy part. 
This is the easy part. Popping tin cans off hay bales. And training and going out to the range. This makes you feel good. This makes you feel like you're doing something. But when that moment comes for which you have been training, sometimes, sometimes, the right decision isn't going to be the one that makes you feel good. In this particular scene, the Sarah Wayne Caius character, Katie Bowman, has every reason to want to shoot the person she's aiming at. But her husband says, wait a minute, think. Step one, then what, and then what, and then what. This could cause us way more problems than taking this person out is worth. But the real level two on this is that they talk to each other. See, initially, he did something behind her back, and she was doing something behind his back. She was part of the resistance. He didn't know. And he had set up this plan to go save their son that was trapped on the other side of the wall without telling her about it. And that caused all the problems. But when they finally got on the same sheet of music and began talking to each other and working together, they began making a plan. And they didn't announce it. And they didn't brag about it to their friends. They just quietly worked together, communicated, and made a plan. And sometimes it wasn't easy. Many times they didn't disagree, but guys, the real asset we are going to have is our families and our ability to talk to each other and our ability to communicate openly and honestly with one another. We don't even need to do it here. Now to reiterate a point, sometimes things are not as they seem. This particular couple in the series, Katie and Will Bowman, he was a police officer and she was a homemaker and they had a bar that they had bought and they were allowed to reopen it. The authority, you know, the group that was uh, put in charge by the aliens, they allowed them to reopen this. And he took a job working for the authority. So at first glance, you would think, oh, these are collaborators. These people can't possibly be part of any resistance. They're not allies. When really they were. They smiled and they put on the brave face and they went out and pretended everything was fine. And there's a time for that. And there's also a time to, on the right, be almost invisible, or on the left, just look normal. He cuts off his beard, puts on a shirt and tie. They go out and just pretend everything is fine and everything is okay. Because behind the scenes, they have a plan. And they're willing to do whatever they have to do to make it happen. In this particular scene, they've kidnapped slash blackmailed a doctor into helping treat the injuries of one of their uh, fellow resistance members, but they record him doing it and say, look, if you repeat what we've done here, we will turn you in to the authority and they'll take you away. So they're pretty brutal. And since he works for the authority at this time, there's not much the guy could do about it. Sometimes things are not as they seem at first blush. Take the time to take a breath, step back, and think clearly about what people may be doing behind the scenes, while appearing to be doing the opposite. It can be done. They can be beaten. Because those in charge now, those sitting in their lofty offices up in D.C., live every day, and in New York, terrified. That's why they want double and triple masking and want to jam needles in people's arms and all this kind of crap. They're terrified. They live every day terrified. And they announce it. On social media, on the news. They telegraph it. 
So when you know that your enemy is operating from a place of fear, it's pretty simple. If your opponent is of a choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, that they may grow arrogant. And they're getting there. They are definitely getting there. But we do live in a moment. I know this is kind of hard to read, but... We live in a moment where we do what we have to do for the people that we love. The old rules just don't apply. Be quiet. Be circumspect. Don't announce your plans. And make sure everyone is on the same sheet of music as to what the goals are. If it allows you to wake up in your bed and be a part of your kid's life, it's the right decision no matter what. And I will leave it there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. And we will see you guys tonight on Twitch.